Penguin Orts, I am the Baby Penguin and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Collaborative Warfare. I've broken my left hand. It's not doing anything exciting, I didn't get into a fight or anything, I snagged my pinky finger on something and I bent it sideways and fractured my left hand, which means I really couldn't be bothered to fly a plane because it was painful. So I thought, you know what, we're going to take things easy this turn and we're just going to send a mission to the moon because on turn 15 we're going to introduce nuclear weapons and they're going to require a moon base. So I thought, you know what, we may as well be prepared for that. So we're launching this, it's called the Apollo because, well, Apollo was a Greek god and the missions to the moon were called Apollo, so why not? And uh, we're going to go to the moon and set up a base there. The moon base requires a science lab, some kerbals and uh, a way to extract and refine ore. And uh, we got all that on here, plus some defences because we don't want anyone being able to just waltz in and either nick my moon base or just destroy it easily. So uh, it's it's got quite a lot of weaponry on it. Um, obviously it uses space missiles because the moon doesn't have an atmosphere. Um, and people can attack this. Just so you know, we've changed the space rule, but the space rule would have been fine anyway because anything below 70 kilometers on the moon would have been fair game to, uh, to attack. Um, but we changed the space rule now uh, in the World Congress, so I'll explain that in a sec. Uh, as you see here, we are just launching uh, some spy sats. I guess they're spy sats, but we're scanning to see where the most ore is, and there's a huge deposit of it in the uh, moon's east crater, so that's where we went. Um, now anyway, so we changed the space rule, so civilian stuff, such as comsats and spy sats, you can't attack them when they're above 70 kilometers. That is against the treaty. But if it's a military installation, so drop pods or a giant orbital death laser, which I'm not building, by the way, because it requires you to have your load distance at 70 kilometers and with 160 craft round Kerbin, that is going to break the game. But uh, anything like that can be attacked or stolen <laughs> Which uh, I think, uh, well, I'm, I'm certainly no stranger to nicking things when they belong to tape. Um, so yeah, anything anything like that is fair game in space, because a lot of you were complaining about it. Uh, we haven't proposed anything else for Congress, we'll do that by the end of the turn, so you'll, we'll tell you what, uh, what whatever we've banned or whatever decision we've made uh, next turn. But uh, anyway, there you go, we're just landing on the moon, uh, just touching down nice and gently. And uh, then we just rolled a little bit to uh, to find some flatter ground, so because we don't want to tip over or anything, we want to have a good view of the surrounding crater. Now, this crater is quite an asset. It is the largest um, source of abundant ore on the whole moon. So undoubtedly, Tape and Agonarch are going to be looking at it with uh, hungry eyes. Hungry eyes. <laughs> Sorry, I won't. I won't sing a song. Um, so hopefully, if Twitchy makes a moon base this turn or another turn. Uh, he'll land it here so we can have more defences to stop them sneaking in. Sneaking into my crater or uh, blowing up my defences. Uh, we're just getting our Kerbal out here just to claim this crater for our own. We're just calling it Apollo Crater. And uh, Tape, you... And Agonach, you, you better not land here or I will be very annoyed. And I'll blow up your base with uh, severe prejudice because it's my crater. Um, so yeah, this is by far the largest area of ore on the... Uh, on the whole moon, and the only other areas are tiny little craters. Uh, this is the moon's east crater, but I am just renaming it Apollo Crater because it sounds a lot more exciting than east crater, which is pretty boring. Um, so there we go. Just putting on our, down our flag to explain it. Uh, explain that it is ours and not for taking. I have dared tape actually to try and take out my moon base just to try and distract him from Twitchy. Um, yet again. I tried to do that last turn, didn't go very well. Uh, but I think he's. I called him a chicken, but I don't, I don't think he's uh, taking me up on that. Uh, Freaking chicken that he is. Chicken Nazi. <laughs> um, and Tape, just to spite me, he did attack Twitchy last turn. No matter how hard we tried, okay, no matter what we do to try and distract him, he keeps attacking Twitchy just to spite me. He made a point of attacking Twitchy with a helicopter. So I decided, you know what, we're going to launch and we're going we're gonna to make him pay for that. He did that just to spite us, so we're just flying uh, over Hamburg Cape, you see the Poseidon there, uh, to Dan Buster's music, because, you know, we're really selling this whole British thing. And uh, we're going to go and make him pay for uh, for attacking Twitchy. And he took, uh, I think it was Cola Crater, 
which is quite a substantial base. Twitchy did take Ida's side, and uh, I've put out some defences there to help defend it. When I, I got there and his plane had fallen apart, um, I didn't realise that it, its defences were still working, so I did put uh, a Cerberus at Ida's side um, to protect it, so he can repair that next turn, uh, and I'm just protecting it. So uh, Ida's side, I don't think Tape's going to take... Uh, he's not going to take it easily, anyway. Um... But uh, he has got Cola Crater, and that is that is very bad. But uh, yeah, this attack didn't go particularly well. Now, I switched out the Hellfires for Mavericks. So I was planning to take on Tape's bigger defenses after I'd take on, taken on a couple of his old defenses. And I thought the Hellfires wouldn't be able to get through its armor. So I really should have taken a load of Hellfires and a couple of Mavericks as well. But I swapped it out for all Mavericks, and Mavericks are much easier to hit than Hellfires. So, yeah, and I don't know what it is. It's never missiles that get me with this, with these these bombers. It's always the guns. I just keep flying too close, and I don't know why. Um, we launched the way three there, and um, if I'd launched more, maybe I would have hit it, but there was also a building in the way, I think. Um, but we just didn't manage to overwhelm it, and the goalkeeper turrets in this turn, for some reason, are just being ridiculously accurate. Sometimes they can't hit anything, and then other times they just ninja snipe everything, so it's really down to luck. Uh, the missiles weren't a problem, we just countermeasure spam like everyone does. And uh, they're amrams, so they're not particularly good at hitting things. I found that, sidewinders are actually vastly superior to amrams, um, generally. And yeah, it quite easily shot down our Mavericks. So we launched a, we launched a couple more, but we launched one there. And if I'd launched a load, I probably could have hit it. But I only launched one because I, I wanted to fly onto other bases and attack other defences. I didn't want to waste all of my uh, missiles on this, which is Area 51, by the way. It's called Area 51. It, 51 is in binary. Uh, but there you go, another mistake. I wasted three missiles because I wasn't actually aiming in the right direction. And then I just fired another two. I'm still trying to save save at least a couple of missiles so I uh, didn't waste them all on this base but uh, I, I probably should have fired them all because I lost the plane as you see here I flew way too close to it and the goalkeeper just completely shredded us um, now that's bad that's very very bad I'm gonna blame it on my broken hand <laughs> um, I, I've completely lost the use of my uh, ring finger and pinky finger. I can use the other. I can use my thumb and my index and my middle finger. But um, I'm going to blame it. I'm going to blame it on that, even though it's really nothing to do with that because I was flying with my right hand. Uh, I guess I'm not as good at flying with my right hand. I uh, using WASD. So I'm going to blame it on my hand that uh, that I got shot down. But anyway, John B is now stuck in enemy territory, and we didn't even scratch the defenses. So. I'm pleading to Tape, if he has even a shred of mercy within him, please spare John B. I'll give you anything, unless it's a base or something expen- I, I, I'm not going to give you anything, but I'll give you anything within reason. Just please don't kill John B. I'll be very sad. Um, so, with our plane down and without even scratching his defences, we couldn't really mount an, offen an offensive on Tape, uh, a successful offensive anyway. Um, without it probably going horrifically wrong. So we're launching a CETO from Yab Namrek, just going past the other CETO there. And uh, I thought we'd go after some easy game. So we're going to go take out uh, one of Brian's bases, because we need to take at least one base every turn. Uh, otherwise this war is not going to go well. So we're taking Sanctuary Mouth, which is a port, so it's actually quite useful. Um... As you see here, we're just parking outside the range of its goalkeeper turret and just firing cruise missiles at it. But it's actually on the port, which is very slightly above the terrain. So the cruise missiles aren't very good at changing direction suddenly. Um, and because of that, they didn't do all too well. Now, I kind of forgot just how effective Brian's defenses are. Because, um, I mean, he's kind of out of the game. So I just assumed it would just be ridiculously easy just to waltz in and nick a base from him. But... Uh, yeah, as, as you see, the goalkeeper turrets are being really accurate today, and then the other one missed. So I just fired a bunch of Hellfires at it, and I was very confident that four Hellfires could overwhelm Brian's defences. I mean, they've overwhelmed Tape's defences in the past. Um, but I was wrong again. I, I probably should have fired them a little closer, but I didn't want to risk getting shot up like uh, my plane was shot up. And, yeah, these... Um... <laughs> 
yeah, th these goalkeeper turrets this turn, I don't know what it what it is with them, but they're just being so accurate. It took out four Hellfires, which is insane. And uh, it's probably because I had to stagger the firing because uh, it wasn't letting me ripple fire or anything because uh, they were too close to each other and it was warning me about bomb clearance or something. So I had to fire them manually and that's why they failed. Now, I don't... I was meant to use these missiles, which are two sidewinders and four intercept missiles, uh, for defensive purposes. But frankly, I don't think Tape's really going to attack me this far on the other side of the world. Um, and my Cito has got lots of guns on it, so it should be okay. I just, I just had enough at this point. Um, so those intercept missiles completely failed, but they distracted the turret, and um, I switched. I tried to switch to the turret. And I switched to the missiles, and then when I switched back, it was blown up. So I assume those sidewinders slammed into it and took it out. Uh, as you see, the rover body is still indestructible, but uh, we decapitated it and we destroyed all its wheels and stuff, so it is very much inoperable. Even though I had to go a shorter distance with the Artemis, it took longer because it was a nightmare to drive. But um, the Cito is much, much nicer to drive. Sorry for the short, such a short episode, but I have broken my hand and I wasn't really up for live commentary. Uh, I'm the Bearded Penguin. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.